Hi guys, hope you had a Merry Christmas. Um, I thought I'd squeeze in um, a tutorial for you before New Year. And today we're going to be working on a um, faux agate with some druzy. So what you're going to need is some translucent clay. I'm using Primo White Translucent and I've also got some more here. Um, in case I need a little bit more and also for backing some white again Primo but then I've got my um, Cernit translucent colours um, Primo and Cernit can be baked together at the higher temperature of 275 which is what Primo bakes at while Cernit is 265 but Cernit can withstand that extra um, 10 degrees so I'm going with this um, Sapphire Translucent and Blue Turquoise Translucent and Emerald Translucent. So they're the colours. I'm also using one of my um, holographic glitters. I'm using the Peacock Blue. These glitters are listed in my Amazon storefront in the description. I'm also going to be using this light blue um, mica powder, any any mica powder, just a light blue. Some silver metal leaf, again this is listed. Some liquid translucent clay and these colourful glass chips, again these are listed. And then obviously cutters of your choice. I'm using these two from Oh Joy Creations. For those of you, um, how can I word this? Oh Joy is in America, she's based in America. But there is another lady that's based in Australia, if that would be easier for you to order from Australia, who also is supplying these cutters as well. Her name's Debbie and I'll list her shop in the description along with Ojoy's shop as well. So you've got a couple of options. Um, yeah, so if it's better for you to order from Australia, then you can look at her shop as well. Right, what am I gonna do? Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Give myself some room. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a chunk of trans and I'm going to add just a smidge of white, just a smidge and it's probably not even quite pea size or close, close to pea size. That's going to get mixed up. Um, and then another chunk of translucent, which I'm just going to leave as translucent. So equalish pieces. I mean, I'm not being overly precise. And then I'm going to go with these Cernit translucent colours as well. And I'm just going to take each one of those colours and form it into some little teardrop shapes because we're going to do a Skinner blend. So you can roughly see how much but of course you can make this as big as you want. So equalish sizes of the three trans colours. Now the only thing I'm a little bit wary of is how dark some of these colours can come out once they're baked. I'm just going to take a little bit more of that one. So what I am going to do is add just a smidge of translucent in each one of them just to tone down the vibrancy of the colour like so. So I've got translucent, translucent with a pinch of white, the, the sapphire cernit translucent with a little bit of trans on top and then the same with the other two colours. So I'm going to go mix that one, that one, that one and that one and then we're going to do a Skinner blend. So once I've mixed all these colours I'll be back. Alright guys I've um, 
mixed all these up and rolled them into little teardrops and I've also rolled out a long strip of translucent and I rolled that out onto a number six on my Atlas 150, zero being the thickest setting so this is quite thin um, and I've also got some uh, translucent rolled out for some backing clay for down the road as well. Okay, so we're just going to turn this into a blend. So I'm just going to mush them together a little bit. Give them a quick roll. Roll them out thin enough so they pass through your pasta machine easily. And for those of that you don't know how to do this, let me just finish rolling it first. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pass it through my pasta machine. like this down and then when it comes out the other end fold it over colour to colour and pass it through again colour to colour pass it through fold colour to colour until you've got a nice gradient of colours so I'm going to go off camera and do that if um, you want to see videos of how to do a Skinner blend there's loads so just just type in Skinner blends and you'll find a tutorial very easily all right so I'm just going to go and do that and I'll be okay back. I've got my blend and I've not over blended it but now I'm going to just take it and fold it over because I want to take this down thinner okay so color to color again I'm just going to squish it a bit and I'm going to run this through my pasta machine down to a number six again so you end up with a nice long strip all right so I'm going to push it through the pasta machine this way until I've got a nice long strip and I'll be back so I've um, stretched this out on a number six setting and it's so long I can't even show you all of it but I'm going to go from light through to the other side going from translucent through to the other side but I am going to roll out another little piece of uh, trans just as a, a core just a little ball not much and I'm just going to roll it into a little bit of a log but that's probably going to be not wide enough um, no do you know what scrap that idea I'll just do this so start at one end and you're just going to roll this all the way through the length of this very, very long strip. And I always like to push the ends in a little bit. Quite firm pressure because as you move along you want to be able to push out any air bubbles. So I'm just giving it a squish as I go. And once I've got to the end of the lightest part here, I'm actually just going to cut that away. I thought this would be an easy way to do this rather than rolling out loads of separate strips. Just do it as a Skinner blend as one long strip and then you're going to get roughly the same width as well. So you're not faffing around rolling out four or five different um, separate strips if you know what I mean and trying to get them the same width and then I'm going to get that um, very thin strip of translucent that I rolled out I'm going to try and pick it up off the table because it's quite thin just cut a piece off and um, oh my glitter and I'm going to add some of this peacock blue holographic glitter and just rub that in there and it rubs in really well because it is extra fine I'm just wanting to add a little bit of sparkle you don't need a great deal but just kind of rub it in there and then let's just cut this to width so it fits And you don't have to cover the whole piece of clay. I haven't. But just add in some glitter. And then just roll that up inside there. Like so. Give it a little rock. 
so you can see a nice line where to cut and that's that just move that over there and then I'm going to add some of this silver leaf now I was going to grab my sheets but you know what I'm just going to plonk it on like this I get in such a mess with those sheets even more so than the flakes and I'm messy with the flakes so while I'm doing that I hope you all, ha all had a really nice Christmas I know I did um, Christmas Eve was at my house and we had family over and then Christmas Day we went to family and then the day after Christmas, which in England is known as Boxing Day, and I still keep that tradition even though I, st I live in America now. Um, and we had friends over. And I'm so excited, guys. My hubby, as a Christmas gift, has arranged a cruise to the Bahamas. And we're going there next week. I am so excited. We're going to go a day early before the ship, you know, floats away and stay the stay one day in Miami and then the same coming back we're going to stay another day in Miami coming back so I am so excited get away from the cold for a little bit because it's meant to be like 80, 80 degrees or something while we're there so I can't wait guys I'm so excited <laughs> yep I'm spoiled he spoils me all right, so now when you've done that, you're going to carry on rolling. So you're just going to take your plug that you already rolled and just continue to roll. And hopefully this will stick. Because we all know I, I had issues with leaf sticking in one of my videos. Although that was leaf to leaf. So anyway, so just keep rolling. And I'm just going to take this a little ways down until it gets to a slightly darker area and I think that's good there so we're keeping a little bit of the gradient as we go along um, I'm just breaking it off at you know certain intervals and I just need something to poke into this and as usual I can't find what I'm looking for um, actually, I think I'll use one of these instead. So get something that you can poke into the clay. And I'm just going to do this just to create a few ridges. And it gives it a little bit of a pattern. Because in agate, you can see those um, little, you know, wavy patterns kind of. So I'm just doing that. And we need to squish it back together and this is a bit loose because it's not sticking fully to the metal leaf at this point but it will okay so when you've done that I'm just going to give this a squeeze try and get that to stick together a bit better give it another little roll Just squash it back down again a little bit just so it's the same size as the the same width as the strip that you've got left this really is not sticking that great guys but I'm not putting liquid clay on it because that would just get too messy and my dog's barking I don't know if you can hear her my dog drives me crazy you may have picked up on that she re I'm not a dog person, to be honest. I'm a cat person. Don't get me wrong, I love all animals, I do. But um, owning a dog is not something I really want to do again, to be honest with you. Anyway, I've just messed with this a little bit just to get that um, all to stick together because the metal leaf does resist a little bit, guys. So I'm just going to carry on with this roll. So same thing. And that's all you're doing, you're just going to keep rolling until you reach the end of your very, very long strip. Give it a nice little press here and there. Push out any air bubbles. Bring it up a little bit. I 
burnt out of camera there a little bit. And just keep doing that guys, that's all you're doing. And then at your the point of where you want to cut, again add some more translucent with some glitter thrown in if you so wish. You don't have to add the glitter. And then, you know, the little layer of um, metal leaf and do your little imprints. And I'm just going to repeat that over and over. I'll do one more time. So I'm just going to squish this. Good. So do your little imprints. It's pretty random. You can do them wherever. It's a good idea to do it on the darker clay because then that little bit that darker clay actually pushes through a little bit. And then give it another squeeze just to make sure it's all stuck together well. And you're just building up and building up and building up. And then get another little piece of uh, trans. I don't think that'll be enough. So I'll just get another little bit. And if you need more, roll more out. Simple as that. A little sprinkle of glitter. Give it a little bit of a rub. And like I say, you don't have to cover the whole piece. It's just wherever you fancy. So I'm going to keep on doing that until I've used up all of my um, strip. So once you put the translucent on, then again you can add the metal leaf. It doesn't have to be silver either. This is just the colours I'm going with. You could do the, the exact same technique with any colour you wanted. There's so many different colours of agate out there. And I mean, I know a lot of them are actually dyed different colours as well. And I wanted to go with quite a vibrant blue, which would probably be a dyed blue, but that's what I'm going with. Um, if you wanted to tone the colours down, the other thing you could do, instead of using just the translucent colour clay like I did, you could just add smidges of colour into translucent so you can get it, you know, the desired colour that you want, however vibrant you want that. So, okay, so you just keep repeating those steps until you've rolled up your whole strip. Now, when I get to the end, I probably won't add as much translucent. I'm just, it's, it's random. I'm probably going to need to roll some more out as well, just so you know. All right, so there's that. And I'm going to continue to roll this up all the way through the strip and do those steps. At intervals and I'll be back. I finished rolling my um, log up like this and I just want to reduce it now because I don't want it to be this big. And like I say you can layer up the translucent and everything else as randomly as you want to and I did actually end up um, wrapping the final piece of trans on the outside but you can do it whichever way. It's just to get some lines running through and obviously don't forget to put your little indents in, you know, at intervals, just so you get a nice little frilly pattern going on. Okay, so I'm just going to, I really want to make sure all those air bubbles are out and everything's stuck together. So I'm just squeezing. See, there's a pretty good one there. Now to get rid of air bubbles, you can just literally get a knife and slice through and then just push it back together. It just lets that air out a little bit. Let's see if I've got any more anywhere. There's a good one. Put a slice. And just push it back. 
so I'm just going to reduce this down and you can see how much you get from it it's quite a lot so if you wanted to um, make it smaller just don't use as much clay obviously just do a smaller Skinner blend in the first place <clears throat> So I'm trying to think how far I want to take this down because I want it to accommodate my cutters and they are going to be rolled, <coughs> the slices are going to be rolled out to stretch them back out again so I don't want it massive. Let's see how this kind of size works and if it's not right we can always roll a little bit more. It's better to not roll too much in the first place. Okay. And that's what it should look like when you cut into it. Don't worry about these little bits that aren't sticking, they will do. But you can see that little frilly pattern going on. And those little layers of translucent in between just breaks up the colour a little bit and just gives it a little, a few little extra, you know, lines running through it. So that's what it looks like. Now bear in mind that the colour is going to probably darken once it's been baked so again if you want to make it lighter you can either add more trans into the mix or <laughs> it might make more sense to just add colour to some trans I did it this way because I wanted the vibrancy of that um, Cernit translucent clay so it's up to you how you do that I'm just trying to get this to stick a bit better let's get rid of this ugly end don't throw it away because it makes brilliant chippy choppy but there you go that's what it looks like inside all right we're just going to let this sit for a while because now we need to make the druzy just so you know there's there's quite a lot so for the druzy part i'm just going to get not a very large amount of um, translucent clay because this is going to get cut up so fine that you don't actually need a lot and even this is probably too much. Um, I think I'll just leave it at that. And you're going to cut it up really, really, really fine. Almost crumb-like. So just get it going. And then what I like to do before I go any smaller is just throw in my mica powder now because that helps to separate the pieces and then you can see how much further you want to cut. So I'm just going to throw some of that in there. And I've got an itchy nose. Give that a tumble. So it's helped separate those pieces now. And you can get a better idea of how much more to cut because it's not clumping together and you're just going to keep doing that until it's very 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 fine pieces I'm just thinking have I missed anything out I don't think so because I'm a bugger for doing that, I know. I forget things. So I'm just going to keep going with this. And I'll just keep doing it on camera just so you can see. I'm just going over and over and over it. It's okay to have a few little bigger pieces, but for the most part, it needs to be tiny. Tiny little pieces. Chip, chop, chip, chop, chip, chop. Um, hmm. One more thing. Thank you. 
Okay, I think that's good. You can go smaller if you want to, but I'm going to stop there. And then I'm just going to throw some more of this um, peacock blue glitter in there just to add a little extra sparkle. Not a great deal, just a little bit. And that's it. That's your druzy. I'm just going to put that over there. Actually, I'll bring it in back into camera a little bit. <laughs> Okay, right then. I'm just going to get a wipe. Clean my hands up a little bit. I've got blue fingers now, blue thumbs. That mica powder really is quite pigmented. Give this a quick wipe. See what I mean? It's really stained. My tile. Oh, quite a few people have asked me what I'm working on. It's just a ceramic tile, tile guys. Um, it's a long one. A big one. Long one. Um, they're not very expensive. I got this one from Home Depot. Um, yeah, that's all it is. It's just a big ceramic tile. Right. I'm just going to give this a quick dry off because this is where the fun bit begins now so I'm going to grab my, uh, my my log and I'm going to take a fairly big chunk so pretty Ooh. and I'm going to just wipe off my pin a little bit rolling pin and I'm just going to gently roll this, flip it, that's looking good actually, I'm loving those colours, but I want to roll this big enough to accommodate my cutters and my cutters are quite big, so it is going to get rolled out quite thin, which is why you need a backing. Um, I think I might have to go with the larger size for the other one. We'll see. What did I do with my other cutter? There it is. So I'm going to use this one. It just needs to be rolled out just a little bit more that way. And you're not necessarily going to fit in all the whole of the pattern, but that's fine. Just because the weight kind of spreads out when you roll it. But that's looking good, guys. Well, I think so anyway. Right, so that's going to accommodate my cutter now. And I can either just, you know, move it over a little bit to get some of this in. Or have it more centred and not have much of the outline bit in there. But you just have to play around with it. I'm just going to spread it just a fraction more. Right. So I'm going to go with this side here and get some of at least some of that in there. Now, obviously, if you used a bigger cutter, you're going to get more in, but you just got to play around with it. But I'm liking it like this. So I'm just going to take that cut it out, give it a little wiggle, lift off the excess again this can be used in a chippy chop, mix all those lovely scraps together of the blues and the translucent that will make a lovely chippy choppy. Alright so there's that, oh I didn't roll that out very level did I? Um, hmm. Yeah, no, I'm doing it right. I had a brain fart there. <laughs> I was thinking, oh crap, did I do it wrong? No. All right, so you can see this is where the core bit is. It's obviously moved over to the side a little bit because of the way I've cut it. But this is where you just um, cut a little bit out to add the druzy. Doesn't have to be a great big area just a little piece like that whoops 
So you do lose some of the, the pattern, but it's fine. And then bring over your backing clay, which I've already rolled out. And I've not rolled it out very thick because we've already got some thickness with the slice. Let's just pop that on there. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. trying to think if I did it this way or did I put yeah do you know what I did what I did don't cut the shape out first because I've still I've got to go back and cut that out again now I'll show you on the next one yeah I had a brain fart I admit it <laughs> right so I'm just gonna roll that a little bit this needs opening back up again though because I squashed it together Like I say, you don't have to do a great big amount in there. Made a bit of a pig's ear of this one, guys. Oops! Come along, out you come. Because now it's stuck to the backing clay, hasn't it? Yeah, don't do what I just did, guys. Ignore that bit. <laughs> but not to worry, we can fix it. Right. I'm just going to take a bit more out of here. I'll show you better on the next pendant. I screwed up here a little bit. And I like to just give it a little bit of a press just to round the edges off a little bit. Okay, so yes, I did screw up, but I'll show you on the next one. So I am just going to recut this now. And hopefully it fits because I don't want to roll it anymore. Right. And a little bit has uh, shown, but I can just do that. Okay. Right. I'll show you better on the next one, but this is basically what you do. Now you're going to take your liquid translucent clay and just put a little dollop on there like that. And then you're going to need something to put it on to the clay. I'm just going to get one of my silicon brush thingies. And you want to put quite a thick layer on. You're not necessarily filling up that whole channel. Um, but thick enough so that all those druzy pieces are going to, you know, be well stuck in there. And it doesn't matter if it goes over the edge because we've got to put some on the edge as well at some point. And the other thing that might be an idea to do, which is another thing I forgot, is to put it on a piece of paper so you can turn it. Right. Derp -a derp -a derp. Right. So I'm just going to, you know, liberally put some of this liquid clay in there. Make sure you get it right up to the edges just give it a good little smush like that okay and then I'm just going to get something to scoop these little pieces of druzy up but before I get my paper stuck in the liquid clay I'm just going to wipe it off the tile right just get a few of these actually that's too much because you'll see why you only want a little bit and of course you can make your channels a bit wider if you want to but I'm just going to put that in there, give it a press down. Make sure it's, you know, in the cl liquid clay so it sticks. Just give it a little push and a little bit up there. give it a little push okay now that channel isn't very wide on that one but what I like also like to do is grab my colorful glass chips 
and these are listed in my Amazon storefront and they come in so many different colours but I'm going to go with this white here um, I've got a little bit of liquid clay left on my thing um, <laughs> uh, silicon brush <laughs> oh my gosh my brain Hang on a sec, guys. I've got all tangled. I've <laughs> got my wire wrapped around my leg somehow. Oh, my word. Okay, so I've only put a little bit of the druzy in this one because I didn't make the channel very wide on this one because it's quite a narrow pendant, so I didn't want to cut away too much of the pattern. And I'm just going to collect these little tiny white chips and put those in there just for added sparkle. Ideally, I'd like to, I would have liked perhaps put some around the edges as well but there's not enough room so I'm just going to put some where I can it's random you can dress it up however you want to you don't have to be like really pedantic about it really it you know so I'm just gonna stick some in there get in there give it a little mush Just want to make sure it's nicely stuck in of course so you can go over with your finger like that and it doesn't have to again it doesn't have to fill the whole depth of the channel and you'll see why in a second okay this bit's really bugging me I've got to I know I could do it after but it's bugging me as I'm looking at it got that little bit of trans showing which doesn't matter because you know it's a translucent stone so it doesn't matter that much okay a little bit more liquid clay and I'm going to put it further up my tile so I don't get my paper in it which is something I do quite a lot and I'm just going to take some more on my <laughs> silicone brush and on the very edge going all the way around that channel I'm just going to draw some liquid clay on following the the shape of the the channel that I cut out oh my voice that feels a bit croaky sounds a bit croaky to me <clears throat> I think I need a drink okay just take that round and you can do it thicker thinner whatever so in some places I'm going a little bit thicker with it but then in other places I'm going a little bit narrower like so okay let's put a little bit more there so it's a little thicker all right so there's that now the next color I'm going to use is this goldy it's not like this is like really bright gold, but this is more, I guess that's more of a coppery colour. But the gold would work just as nice, but I'm going to go with this one. And same thing, I'm just going to get little pieces and just plop it on that line of liquid clay. And you can move it around and put it where you want it to go. So this, this part is a little bit tedious, but oops and sometimes it's a little awkward as you can tell so I'm just gonna plop those around the edge and Bob's your uncle fan is your aunt and that's your piece and I don't want to bore you with doing this but that's all I'm doing I'm gonna go all the way around with that but I just want to quickly show you where I screwed up with my pendant the last that pendant that I've just done not really screwed up but it just made it a little bit more difficult really so let's make another one um, and uh, I need something to scratch my back guys <laughs> what an itch I get the I get an itch on my back in the same spot over and over it drives me crazy right enough rambling <laughs> oh my gosh right I'm gonna get another 
a fairly decent chunk of this and now I want to accommodate this this shape and this one's bigger than the other one so I'm just going to smush this together a bit because that is separating a little bit I'm going to roll it out again like I showed you I'm going to try and keep it thinner uh, narrower which is a little tricky to do but again manipulation oh, a bit of clay stuck on me let me see how I'm going with this again it's not going to fit the whole thing in obviously if you did uh, <coughs> uh, let's have a look at this one see if that would look any different a wider one you're going to get more of the pattern on there but I absolutely love this shape it's one of my favorite ones so I'm going to use it I'm trying to keep it narrower narrower but taller right make sure it accommodates I think that's good that's going to that's going to accommodate that shape anyway and then instead of um, cutting the shape out first cut the center out first and then put it on your backing clay it just makes it easier guys I knew I was having a brain fart and I couldn't figure out <laughs> what I was doing wrong <laughs> oh dear right I'm going to make this channel a little bigger and a little wider and you just kind of squiggle your blade in there like that and get that out of there so this one's a bigger channel and that's fine you can make them as big or small as you want to no fast rules for this one hard and fast rules should I say right then you get your backing clay whoops knock the camera and then you put it on your backing clay not the other way around I just wanted to rectify that because I'm sure people are going to be yelling at the camera Deb no do it the other way it's so much easier and then give that a little roll just to make sure it's stuck on there good like so and then cut it out Derp -a derp. So let's have a look. I'm smoothing this out a bit, get those edges a little smoother. All right, I think I'm going to go there, like so. Give it a good wiggle. Make sure those two pieces of clay have stuck together good. lift and remove okay right that's what you should have done so I just wanted to quickly show you you know it's no big deal it's uh, easily fixed but it's just easier doing it that way so same thing I'm going to fill up though this channel with liquid clay obviously I'm going to finish putting the gold pieces around that one but I don't want to bore you on camera with all that because it it's a little tedious and it does take some time so I'm just going to get my silicon brushy thing. Oh, I know what I need to do. Derp, paper. I'm going to get some paper. <laughs> Plop that on there. Then it's easy to move it around. See, I know all this stuff. I'm just so forgetful. I don't, I don't know. It must be my age. I just forget. I forget stuff. And then it's like, duh why did you do it like that or why didn't you do it this way or you know I think I need a little bit more liquid clay for this one this one's a bit of a thicker pendant as well I didn't roll it out as deep as, as thin which is all good 
I probably prefer the, the, the thicker one to be honest. So again that's on you, you can roll it out as thin as you want to, you can make your channel as big as you want to. Um, you don't have to use these same colours, you can just use, do this technique and use any colour you want. Is it realistic? Mm, yeah, but I think it's going along the lines of the dyed agates. It's not really a natural colour that I'm doing, but that's all that's all good, that's all fine. And then I'm going to get my little bits of... See, see what I mean, guys? I only used a tiny bit and I really shouldn't have used all that. Looks like I'm going to be making druzy pendants for some time. And I'm just going to drop that in there. And then I am going to just kind of manoeuvre it a little bit and try and leave a little bit of space. I'm just going to stick that up there. I'm just trying to push it more in the, into the centre. I don't want that bit, it's too big. Just manoeuvre it around a little bit. Just give them a little push down just to make sure they're in that liquid clay. And then I'm going to do the same thing, get my little white um, glass chips. What am I doing? And I'm going to just drop those all the way around again like I did in the last one. And then I'm going to do the same thing, put a line of liquid clay all the way around and then add my gold or my copper or whatever. Alright guys, so I'm going to do that off camera. You know what to do. Um, I'm going to finish doing those. Just give you a little bit of a close up. But they're looking good. I'll do those. I'll quickly show you. And then I'll bake them. I'll be back. Alright guys, I've finished fiddling around with those. And I've put all the little gold bits around the edges. And that's what they look like pre-bake. I don't know if you can see that very clearly on the camera. <clears throat> but um, anyway... I've finished doing that so I'm going to go and put these in the oven for an hour on 275 and I'll be back okay guys they've been baked I sanded the edges in the back a little bit um, and I resined them but I only resined them up to the edge of the channel I haven't resined inside that ain't coming out as long as you put plenty of liquid clay in there so there they are guys. I've not dressed them in any way. I'll just show them to you as is. Sparkly. I love them. I love the colour as well. Now like I said before, if you wanted to get more of that pattern showing, it all depends on what shape you're going to use. I'll just quickly show you. These aren't finished, but I just practiced with a couple more pieces and you can see on this one, I mean I don't particularly like the round shape for this kind of stone, but just so you get a general idea this is going to show more of the pattern because of the shape of the pendant and I incorporated more of the pattern on this heart as well this did um, take some of the pattern away but I still love them I still love them so there you go guys faux agate with druzy um, oh just before I go um, obviously I made the druzy from clay and I picked the colour that I wanted to make it with. You don't even have to do that if you don't want to. If there's a colour of those um, uh, coloured glass chips that you like, you could just literally use all glass for the centre. Um, I didn't particularly like the colours. Well, it's not that I don't like them. They just didn't have the colour I want. So hence I made my own. But you can just use all glass if you wanted to. Alright guys, enough rambling for today. Um, if I don't get out another tutorial before the new year, happy new year. Thanks guys for all your support this year. I really appreciate it. Um, have a good one and I'll catch you later.